We're continuing our look at uh, objects in Java and uh, in a previous tutorial we looked at or created this fraction class and uh, it's a very simple class for now. It has two fields in it, two integer fields. One is the numerator and one is the denominator. And I also made a uh, support file called fractiontest.java and that contains the class fraction test. This also contains our main method, so this is actually where our program is running from. The fraction class itself doesn't actually have a main method, which means it does not start uh, running as a program. In our actual main method, as part of the fraction test class, we created fraction objects. And here is a shorter way of, of creating those fraction objects. I believe in the previous tutorial I showed you uh, this method for creating a fraction object. So we would declare the variable fraction f and then we would say f is equal to new fraction. So now I've streamlined that, basically took the two lines together and put them into a single line and that can uh, make your programming a little bit more efficient. In this case I'm creating two instances of the fraction object. One of them is called f and one of them is called g and uh, you can see that I've got f is 7 thirds, is the fraction 7 thirds, g is the fraction 5 sixths, and if I compile and run this program I can see the output of those values. There's 7 thirds, there's 5 sixths, and each of these two fractions has its own location in memory. When I do an output of just the object f or just the object g, that actually gives me the memory location of the object. Now for this tutorial we wanted to look at instance methods. So in the fraction test class we have a main method. So in our actual fraction class we're also going to produce a method. And in this case we are going to uh, produce a method to determine the size or to return actually. Uh, which is the same as the absolute value. So what I want to do is I want to return the size of any particular fraction uh, as a decimal value if that's appropriate. And so I'm going to create a method and it's going to be, it's public, and it's going to return a double size value that allows for decimal places and it's going to just be called size. I'm not going to have any parameters passed into this method. You could have an instance method with parameters, but for this first example I'm not going to. And uh, I'm going to do this the long way. So double uh, result. And then I'm going to say result is equal to uh, math.abs. That's the absolute value from the math class. Now, your first instinct here might be to do num over n, simply like that. And then we would return result. Uh, and I understand why you might have the instinct to do this. It's perfectly reasonable. I'm going to go ahead and compile this and run it. Actually, over in my fraction test, I'm going to have to add an extra line, system.out.println, and I'm going to. How do I invoke this? How do I invoke this instance method? It's called size. And so the way that I do that here is I say I want to do this for the object f. So I use the letter f, of course and then size. Just in the same way that f.num refers to the numerator field, f.den is this, uh, the denominator field, f.size with an open close bracket refers to the instance method that goes along with that. And I'm going to do one for g as well. And let's compile and run that. And if you take a look at my results, I have um, seven thirds, and then I have the address of the fraction. I'm going to take those out. They're kind of a distraction now. They don't actually add anything to the program going forward. And 2.0 is my result. Seven divided by three is 2.0. Well, that's not quite right. Seven divided by three, well, three goes into seven two times, but there's actually also, there should be a decimal point, a uh, decimal part left over. The next result is even more peculiar. 5 divided by 6 gave me an answer of 0, 0.0. And so the problem there is that this is actually performing, if we look back here, when I did num divided by den, that's actually performing an integer division. Because both of these fields, num and den, are integer values, 
when you give Java two integers and you divide them, Java assumes that you meant for the, the result to also be an integer. And so it will truncate any decimal portion of your answer. So in order to improve this, there are a number of ways that I could do it. For example, I could multiply uh, num by 1.0, and that will cause it to take on a decimal value. Um, so let's just, sh I'll show you that, compile this and run. And actually when I run this, I'm going to run it from here, you can see the result. I get an error because there's no main method here in fraction. So I'm going to have to go back into here and run it from there. I'll run it from the fraction test and you can see I get results that are much more in line with my expectations. 2.333 and so on, 0 0.8333. Um, something you might notice down here at the end of these of these results, the, the, the precision kind of goes screwy on us. It should never be, there should never be a 5 here, there should never be a 4 on the end of this one. Uh, that's, a, that's one of the reasons why we want to work with the right kinds of data to the right level of precision because computers uh, can do a lot of things for us but when they're working with decimal values when you're working with doubles or floats or real values of some sort uh, once you get into once you get too far into the precision there's always the risk that the uh, computer is going to lose track of something over the course of some calculations or how it stores it so that's something to keep in mind uh, just to tuck that away in your memory for the future if you ever get answers that are kind of that look a little bit off you have to ask yourself am I asking too much by way of precision okay another way I could have done this is I could have used a cast I could have said okay well I'm going to I'm going to cast the variable num into a double value and that's essentially the same thing as I did with multiplying it by 1.0 so once again I'm just going to show you this gives me the same result so it's going to turn that deci or it's going to turn that integer into a double to start and you can see we get the exact same result which is what we wanted now why is this called an instance method and what are the differences involved there so first of all this is an instance method because we've defined a method for the class fraction and this method is called size but if you look at how I actually made use of this method I have f dot size and that gave me the result 2.3333 etc and then I, call, I looked at g dot size and that gave me the result 0 0.8333 so the reason why I got two different results there is because each of these methods is going to use the data from the object that actually calls the method. So in the case of f, when you ask for the size of f, you're asking for the size of the fraction that has these fields, numerator of 7, denominator of 3. When you ask for the size of g, you're asking for the size of the fraction with a numerator of 5 and a denominator of 6. That is uh, very different from the other type of method which is called a class method whereas the result uh, where the result of a class method depends entirely upon the code in the method and any any parameters that you input to it whereas a, uh, an instance method it depends upon uh, the to some extent it's going to depend upon the object that is calling it at least if it's written correctly it will now how do you know the difference between an instance method and a class and a, and a uh, class method and that's going to be the presence of this word static uh, this can have other meanings in Java as we go forward we'll explore some of them but when you are creating a method for now we're always going to create public methods actually we will create private methods sometime in the near future but for now public methods and then the return type the data type of the method in this case it's going to return a double um, that could be also be void if it doesn't return anything the name of the method and then we've got this static so for an instance method we don't say static we just say public double or public and then data type and then the name of the method whereas if you look back here at my main method public static void main so there's that public the word static means that this is actually a class method void uh, void means that it's not returning anything and then main is the name of it so that's a way you can help recognize instance versus class class methods okay so there's just a, a brief overview of a of a class method or of an instance method I'm sorry pardon me 
So there's an instance method. It acts upon the data associated with that particular object. And that's the thing you really want to take away from this tutorial. Okay, I hope that was helpful and we'll carry on our discussion of objects and classes in Java in the next tutorial.